Hey guys, this is Raphael. I hope you're having a good day. It's a beautiful one here in Tennessee. Glad to be alive, and I know we all are. I hope that you enjoyed the segment the other day on Confederate currency. I got a lot of good feedback on it, and I appreciate each one of you taking the time to watch and for taking the time to uh, give me your feedback and also to share the videos, because I appreciate it. I started these because when the coronavirus hit, sales went away, but I still had the passion to share what I have. You guys have made it a wonderful time. Sales are still strong, and I wanna thank each one of you for helping me do that, because this is how I feed my family. It's a weird way, but it is how I do it, and I'm so thankful that you guys have allowed me to do that. So today, Carrying on with the currency talk, I wanted to talk about condition because as we talked about with guns, Colts, and other things that they made a lot of, when it comes to value, when it's something that has mass production, condition is everything. And condition drives the price of Confederate currency as it does with many things. When you first get started, it's easier to find pieces that are lesser price to get that foot in the door. But I have so many good customers that's like, I've got one and I love it, but I would like to trade it up for a better piece, better condition. And it's completely understandable. We've all done it. That's one of the things about collecting. When you have one, you want to own the best one and you want to own all of them. And that's just the collector in us. Today, I would like to talk about condition, but I thought I'd pick a cool Confederate note to talk about. As we mentioned the other day, there was a fellow named Grover Criswell, and he wrote a book and broke the styles and denominations of Confederate currency down into 72 types, T1 through T72. Today, I'd like to talk about a T64. That one was made in 1864. The $500 denomination, it was made by Keating and Ball in Columbia, South Carolina. They did 168,400 of them. So a lot of them are out there. And as we talked about, condition when you have something with that larger production is very key. The Note has always been a favorite with collectors, even back then, because of the style and design. When you look at the note, we have the equestrian great seal of the Confederacy down in the corner with the Confederate battle flag above it. The battle flag was never officially adopted by the Confederate government, even though they flew it many, many places. Down in the other corner, we have the image of Stonewall Jackson, Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson. He was born January 21st, 1824, and went to uh, Virginia Military Academy before the war, and he served in the regular army with the U.S. When the Confederacy uh, seceded, he joined them, and at the first battle, well, the first major, major battle of the war, which was the Battle of First Manassas, our first bull run. He was leading his troops and it was a time of dismay because many of the uniforms looked alike, they had poor communication and nobody really knew what was going on. And some of the soldiers on both sides were scared to death and I don't blame them. Uh, and they were trying to find something to rally around. And there was a soldier from South Carolina, Bernard B, B E E. And he found that rallying point and he said, there stands Jackson like a stone wall. And some people say that he meant it like he is an immovable stone wall. And there's some people that say, he isn't doing anything, but the optimist in everybody said he was standing there like an immovable wall. And so the nickname stuck. And so for the rest of his short life, 
He was Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson. And on May 2nd, 1863, they had a confrontation with the Union. That evening, he was riding and some Confederate pickets accidentally shot him. Friendly fire. And Jackson had his left arm amputated. And from that amputation, he got sick, developed pneumonia, and died eight days later. So he died on May 10th, 1863. And so that's the story of Jackson and the note. Now back to the condition that I started all this about. Um, the notes on these can be found with a wide variety of prices. Generally, the cheapest you're ever going to see a real one is about $200. The real ones that are nice like this, that are just complete, they've got wear because you can tell they were in a soldier's pocket, they were in a civilian's pocket, uh, and worn will be around $350, $400. The better notes can go up well over $1,000 for the right note, and it has to be really, really choice to do that. Condition has become so important that like with baseball cards and with coins, there are companies out there that will grade your currency. And there's companies like PCGS and PMG, um, and they grade them. And of course, the higher the grade, the more they bring. And this is one of the graded notes. It's done by the company uh, PMG, Paper Money Guarantee. And they put it in their nice little holder and they've graded this one at very fine. And same note, but you have a third party telling you that one, it's real, and two, how nice it is. Because, pay attention, Confederate notes are probably the most counterfeited thing that you will encounter next to Confederate buckles. This note was counterfeited even in 1864. In Havana, Cuba, they made some copies of this, brought it up through the Gulf, and circulated them to fool folks and to help try to bring down the Confederate government. So, ever since 1864, there have been copies of this note out there, as there were with many Confederate notes. That's a whole separate collecting entity that we will talk about someday if you guys keep watching. So, how do I know one of these is real? Buy from somebody that you trust and somebody that will guarantee it. There are a couple of things that you can look at and you can see quickly if it does have a chance of being real. All Confederate notes should be, let me correct that, almost all Confederate notes are hand signed. When you see along the bottom, they're signed for register and for treasurer. These were actually signed by ladies in Richmond that sat around signing notes all day long. So each note should have that hand signature. If you see one that is consistent on the ink all the way across, it's printed. And that should throw up a big red flag. When you sign your name, the pressure of your hand goes up and down. And the ink should do that same thing. That should go from light to dark, depending on how much pressure that person that signed it was putting on it. That's one thing to look for. Pass there, be sure you know who you're getting it from. Be sure that they will guarantee it. And if they won't guarantee it, buy it from me, because I will. I hope that you have enjoyed this. I hope you've learned a little bit. I hope I haven't bored you too much. And if there is anything that you guys would like to know about, let me know. I've had several people mention possibly cannons and bigger things, but I'm doing these by myself. Once I get a little bit more help, I hope to do the a few things outdoors, and I hope to do some of the larger things like muskets, saddles. I've got a few uniforms and a flag or two I'm going to talk about. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you know that I really, really appreciate you taking the time to watch these and taking time to leave your comments. I appreciate it if you would share them uh, because it has helped me, it's helped my business, and it helped my family. And 
Those of you that know me know that I love my family and I want to take care of them. And thanks to these videos, you guys have helped me to do that. And I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope when you see somebody that you care about, tell them you love them. It's not a sissy thing to do. If the last words you ever hear out of my mouth are, I love you, I'm okay with that. I hope you guys have a great day. I love y'all.